Riff, and I'm gonna show you today how to make a fortune teller. Um, so for today's activity, fortune teller, the only two things you really need are a piece of paper and something to write with. Um, if you prefer to cut instead of tear, you might need some scissors. And if you want to make your fortune teller colorful, you'll need some crayons. All right, this activity should only take about 15 to 20 minutes. However, it depends on how much detail you want to add to your fortune teller. But let's get started. All right, to start off, you have a piece of paper. Now mine happens to be graph paper because that's what I had in my house. Um, but white blank paper, construction paper, those all work great too. Um, and it really doesn't matter what size paper you have, but most of our paper comes in rectangles. So the first step to making a fortune teller is we need to turn this rectangle into a square. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take one edge or one corner of our page and we're going to make the um, my right side edge match up to my top edge by bringing the corner over. and making it into a triangle on top. So it looks like this. All right, now in order to make this into a square, we have to get rid of this top bobby piece. Now you can either bend it over and crease it so that you can then tear the paper or you can crease it and then use that as a line to cut across, okay? I prefer to tear it, so I'm gonna make one more crease. And then I'm gonna tear my paper right there. And voila, we have a square. All right, so you've already folded it in one direction. Now you're going to take the two corners that have that line going between them and you're going to fold them together. And crease it down. We want to make sure we're making lines in the paper. All right, unfold that square. Now you should have an X going through the center. Now we're going to take all four, four of our corners and fold them in to the center where the X meets. So every corner is folding into the center and remember to crease your folds. Creasing just means to push down on the outside so that it makes a line. Great, so once you folded all the corners in, you should have a smaller square now. Now you should be opening the flaps up to you. I want you to flip it over so that you can't open it anymore. It's all flat and you should see four little squares. We're gonna take, do the same thing on this side and flip those, fold those corners into the center. One more time. Great, so now you should have four triangles that have a line through the middle, so really eight little triangles. Um, and an even smaller square. Now, in order to make, finish up our fortune teller folding, all we need to do is fold it in half. Okay, fold it in half like this. Now, this is the tricky part. So you'll see that there are little flaps here on the sides. Okay, that's where we're gonna put our fingers. But first, we have to make this so it kind of bends all into the middle. So the trick that I like to do is I kind of hold the corners, but I put my finger in the middle here while I hold the corners, and I kind of wiggle my chin in between the center there so that I can push all the corners into each other. Okay, once you have the corners in, you can hold it from the top and pop out each of the little flaps. Pinch it there, pop out the other two. And voila, we have a fortune teller. So that's the folding part, pretty quick. Um, feel free to watch that as many times as you need to to get the popping out part and any of the folds. If you don't get the folds right the first time, you need to go through and watch and make another one, that's okay. I had to go through like three the first time I made it. 
All right. So now that you've, we've made it, remember the first time that we kind of fold it in is the easiest. After that, it'll be pretty easy to put back together. But I want you to set it down on the table so that the four squares with the flaps are face up, okay? These are the squares that are gonna be on the outside of our fortune teller, okay? On the outside. Now, the classic method of what to put on the outside is to put colors. So on mine, I'm gonna put a red circle, and I like to label it. So I'm gonna write red. I'm gonna put a blue circle. All right, so there's my four colors. I'm gonna bend it again, just so that we can see what that looks like. There we go, four colors, okay? Now, you don't have to make colors. You can get creative on the outside here. On my other fortune teller, I made it into four different animals. So I have an octopus, whale, unicorn, and frog. If you like cars, you can put different kinds of cars. If you like sports, you can put different sports. If you like flowers, you can put different flowers. You can be really flexible with that, or you can just put a bunch of random stuff on there. But the key is you want one, different item, color, animal per square. Okay. All right, that's part one. Part two, we're gonna make it go flat again, and this time we're gonna flip it over to the triangle flaps. Now, there are four triangle flaps, but each one is kind of cut in a half, so we're gonna write one number on each half triangle. Now, this is where I like to use my pencil, but you can use your crayon or marker, whatever you pencil you have. All right, one, two, you're gonna label them one through eight. Just like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? All right, now here's why we did that. We have our color or animal on the outside and you're going to, when you hold, I'll use my animal. When you hold the fortune teller, you're gonna hold it out to someone and say, pick a whatever. In my case, it's pick an animal. So let's say someone says whale. So then I get to spell out whale, which is why I wrote it down there. W, and every time I say a letter, I move the fortune teller in a different, different direction. So it goes out and then you close it and you open up the other way. You might have to spend some time just getting used to that. So if they choose whale, I'm gonna spell W H. A L E. So L with an E. And I hold it there. Then I say pick a number. And the person gets to pick one of the numbers that it landed on. Let's say they picked three. So then I say one, two, three. And there's new numbers there. And I say pick a number one more time. And let's say they choose two. So I would go to two, I'd open up the flap, and I'd read what I wrote in two. This one says, you will get a new pet. So that means we've done the outside, we've done the numbers, now we need to write the fortunes. So this is the fun part where you can write literally anything. You can write good fortunes, you can uh, make it instead of a fortune teller, make it be like something they have to do. So for example, I'm going to write um, tell someone you love them and give someone a high five. But you can also write things like you will win one million dollars. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and then you're gonna fill out the rest so that you can have the full fortune teller experience, which we'll go through one more time. So again, fold it up, put your fingers under the flaps, share it with your friend. Let's say they pick unicorn. I spell out unicorn, every letter going a different direction with my fingers. So U-N-I-C-O-R-N. And it's okay to look at the word when you do it. All right, pick a number. Let's say you pick four. One, two, three, four. 
Pick another number. Let's say you pick eight, because that's my favorite number. Oh, second time, you read the fortune. This one says, you will get to go somewhere really cool this year. Oh, won't that be fun? I can't wait. I hope it's double H, because I can't wait to go back to camp. All right, on that note, you have your fortune teller. Have fun. Give all of your friends and family members a fortune today. Maybe it'll make them smile. Teach someone else how to write a fortune teller. Use it for yourself when you feel like you need a good pick-me-up. It's just a fun thing to do and to teach other people and to do some art skills. All right, thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a great day.